Hello everyone, welcome back to Explore Electronics. In this video, let's see biasing in mass amplifier circuits. If you look at the physical structure of a MOSFET, we can see this is the voltage we are going to apply for MOSFET operation. That is VGS from the gate and VDS from the drain with respect to source terminal. So these two voltages are responsible for MOSFET operation. If you look at the current versus drain voltage characteristics, this is ID in milliamps and this is VDS in volts. And the transistor will be operated in three regions, cutoff region, ohmic region and saturation region. The ohmic region of operation and cutoff region of operation will be used for transistor when it is used as a switch. But to operate the MOSFET as amplifier, in amplifier circuits, we need to keep the transistor to operate in saturation region. So if you look at the expression of a saturation region current, here this ID dependent on VGS, not VDS. Why? Because from here onwards, from this point onwards, if we apply VDS further, if VDS increases, current will not increase. Current will be constant. So in this constant current region, if we fix VGS as 4 volt something like this, this can be used as a operating point. So we need to fix the VGS so that we can expect constant ID. So to fix this VGS, so to get a constant ID, we will be having different biasing methods. There are four biasing methods here. One is biasing by fixing VGS, biasing by fixed VG and having a resistor at the source biasing using drain to gate feedback resistor biasing using constant current source let us look into it one by one biasing by fixed vgs here we need to fix the voltage of gate to source you can look at this circuit this is the mosfet which is to be operated in a saturation region as amplifier for that we need to keep this vds as we know VDS should be greater than VGS minus VT and VGS should be greater than VT. This is the condition for saturation. So for that, we will be having VDD at the drain terminal so that it will satisfy this criteria. Now we need to fix this VGS constant so that ID will be constant. That will be achieved by using a voltage divider that is through RG1 and RG2. VG will be constant. We can expect this VG as constant by using a voltage divider through VDD and these two resistors. Once this VG as constant, that is what we get at the gate and source terminal. So VG will be equal to VGS here. Because of this VGS is constant, we can say this ID is constant. But what happens here, if this MOSFET, suppose if I am consider this as MOSFET 1, is replaced with MOS, MOSFET 2. So here in the saturation current equation you can see this ID is constant when this VGS is constant we say. But it is also depending on mu n, it is also dependent on COX, it is also dependent on W by L ratio. These three parameters are dependent on technology what we are going to use while fabricating MOSFET 1 and MOSFET 2. So this MOSFET is replaced with the other MOSFET may be having different values of mu n, COX, W by L ratio. In such cases what happens, the threshold voltage of that device is going to be varied. And obviously mobility varies, the current is going to vary. So this is not a good approach of biasing. We need to bias the device in such a way that even if for any other variations like mu n, COX, W by L, the operating region should not be changed means ID should be constant for VGS. So before going to the other method, if you look at the biasing by fixed VGS for two different devices, you can see VGS is constant, but we'll be getting two different IDs. If you look at, if you take this as ID1 by taking mu n1 and COX1 and W by L ratio of MOSFET1, this is for MOSFET1. Similarly for MOSFET2, the current will be ID2 and mu n2, COX2 and W by L ratio 2. So here if VGS is constant for both the devices, because of these variations you can see we will be getting different currents. We need to avoid this. 
So if you look at the next biasing method, biasing using fixing VG and connecting a resistor in the source. So if you look at the circuit again, if you compare with the previous circuit, we will be having a extra resistor RS here. Now, if you fix this VG using a voltage divider circuit, this VGS is not same as VG, but this VGS plus the voltage drop at the resistance RS, that is RS into ID will be equal to VG. Now, if because of any other reason, if ID increases or decreases, what happens? How this RS making that compensation and bringing back that ID to a constant value, we need to understand. So first let us take this case. If ID increases for any reason, for any reason, if ID increases, what happens? Here in this expression, if you look at, if this ID increases, anyhow VG is constant, we need to equate this right hand side expression to VG because of any reason this ID is increasing. So what happens? This VGS is variable. Anyhow, we are not fixing this VGS. We are only fixing VG. So this VGS reduces. And one more thing we know that this current ID will be dependent on VGS in saturation region. If there is a small variation in VGS, current also varies. If VGS increases, current increases and VGS decreases, current decreases. So because of ID increases here, in this expression, if you see, VGS should decrease. And once this VGS decreases, current will come back to the normal position. Means current decreases again. By this way, we can expect ID will be constant even if ID increases for any reason. And look at the second case, if ID decreases for any reason. In this expression again, if this ID decreases, if this ID decreases, what happens? This VGS will be increasing to compensate VG. If this VGS increases, again ID will be increasing and ID becomes constant again. So this way, this RS is helping the biasing and keeping this ID constant. So this can eliminate the previous problem what we have seen in biasing by fixing VGS. The next approach is that biasing using a drain to gate feedback resistor. Here in this circuit you can see there is a resistor RG which is connected between drain and gate of the device. By using this RG we can say whatever the voltage we are getting at gate to source is VGS that is equal to VDS. Why because anyhow the current flowing into the gate of the MOSFET is zero. Always IG is equal to zero because of the insulator present in between. So IG is equal to zero means the voltage drop at the gate terminal or the gate resistor that is RG is equal to zero. So we say VGS will be equal to VDS. Whatever the voltage we will be having at VGS that will be equal to VGS. If you rearrange this expression and writing VDD is equal to VGS plus ID RD. Now again if you take the same cases if ID increases for any reason, what happens here? If this ID increases again, this VGS decreases to equate to VDD to a constant value. Because of this decrease in VGS, current ID is also decreases again. So that will make ID constant. Again, if ID increases for any reason, VGS also increase. And if VGS increases, current will also increase. Again, it will come back to the normal position. That is how this RG is utilized to bring back the ID to the normal position, keeping this VGS and VDS to the operating point. And the next thing is that biasing using a constant current source. Here in the diagram you can see, we can have a current source at the source of the MOSFET. So this current source maintaining ID equal to the constant current source value that is I. Even if there is a variation in the ID that will be compensated by the current source. Since it is a constant current source, it is generating a constant value. So ID will not be varied, it will be constant. These are the different methods of biasing in MOSFET.